Hi everyone, Joshua Hinlin here, and today I'm in Cleveland, Ohio, next to the USS Cod World War II submarine. This submarine was launched in March of 1943 as the US was desperately trying to battle the Japanese in the Pacific and around all of the contested islands that the Japanese and Americans were fighting over during the Second World War. This submarine could carry a crew of up to 97 men, which is incredible when you walk through this and see how small all of the different compartments are. It had armaments consisting of 24 torpedoes, a 5-inch deck gun, and two 40-millimeter guns as well on the deck. Now, you might be wondering, why would a submarine have deck guns? And that's a good question. But it's answered because uh, these submarines during the Second World War didn't actually spend a tremendous amount of time under the water. So while the submarine was on the surface, uh, it could reach up to speeds of 24 miles per hour uh, with four electric motors. But before submerging, the motors had to be shut off and all the power would be drawn from the batteries. Due to a limited amount of battery power, uh, its underwater speed was only nine miles per hour and could only be sustained for about 60 minutes. So it could really only go nine miles per hour for about an hour under the water before it had to surface again and recharge those batteries. Now, if it went at just two miles per hour, it could go for up to 48 hours underwater, but that obviously is moving extremely slow. So a lot of the time it spent underwater was all based on how much battery power there was. But that's why you had these deck guns as well because it did spend a tremendous amount of time on the surface. But it was very dangerous to spend time on the surface because it could easily be spotted by Japanese ships or planes that were always hunting for American submarines. You can actually see um, some marks from some of its battles uh, on the surface deck of the submarine. So there are some metal plating that's been um, compressed and uh, bowed a little bit because of the force of depth charges that exploded uh, near the submarine when it was under the water. There are some 20 millimeter bullet holes as well from Japanese uh, ships and guns. So this uh, submarine saw a tremendous amount of combat during the war. However, it had a very successful career. It sank a Japanese destroyer, an LST, uh, a minesweeper, and quite a few cargo ships and troop transports. One of the most interesting stories of the COD's career, though, was on July 8, 1945, when the COD came to the aid of the Dutch submarine O-19. So this Dutch submarine had gotten stuck on a reef and the COD spent a couple of days trying to tow it free off the reef, but eventually the American commander realized that that wasn't going to work. And so the COD took all 55 Dutch submariners aboard. So that meant at this time there were 152 men on board the USS COD after rescuing those Danish submariners. You can actually see uh, some marks from that on kind of the scoreboard area of the submarine today. and. There's a little martini glass that represents the party that the Danish threw the crew of the USS Cod uh, after they rescued them. You can also see uh, markings celebrating the various victories over Japanese ships and some of the other smaller vessels that the Cod sank as well. So it's always fascinating walking through any ship or submarine from World War II. Uh, it's a great experience to just walk through. Like I said earlier, it's very cramped in there. You do have to be very careful if you're visiting here and have limited mobility because even the hatches getting into and out of the submarine are, are very difficult and require um, pretty good mobility in addition to just moving through the submarine itself in very cramped quarters as well. Uh, if, you're, if you're very tall, it also isn't great, but uh, if you're able to make it out here and to walk through, it really is a, a really fun uh, experience to just see what the, the crew life was like. And it, there's lots of good audio guides as you walk through as well that kind of helps explain the engine room and torpedo rooms and a lot of the daily life of the crew and some of the food they would have eaten, things of that nature. So if you're in the Cleveland area and interested in World War II history at all, this is a really fantastic submarine to come out and visit. It was $14 each, which is a little expensive, but that does include parking as well. And this is right in the downtown Cleveland area. And so parking is at a premium here. So you're kind of paying for that in addition to the admission to uh, a wonderful historic artifact here from World War II. Thanks for watching.